Let's now have a look at accessories for your camera. Unfortunately, you're going to find that when you buy your camera, that is the beginning of your expenses with photography. There are two important accessories that we need when we buy a camera. The first of all is a memory card. Now with modern memory cards, they can be a very large size as this four gigabyte card. With a regular compact camera, and a JPEG file, you may get thousands of photographs on one card. So you may think, why do I need to have more than one memory card if I can record 2,000 photographs on one of them? Well, I have a simple reason. That is, if you're traveling and something happens to the memory card, then maybe it's corrupted or you, maybe you accidentally deleted the photographs. You do not want to keep on using that memory card. If you do, then it's simply going to overwrite the existing photographs. Believe it or not, there is software available that will allow you to recover deleted photographs, even if you've reformatted the card. Therefore, if you've got a second memory card, then you can put the first memory card away, put it somewhere safe, get the second memory card out, and continue to take photographs. When you get home, then take the first memory card to a friend or a camera store, and they'll be able to recover all the photographs for you. Or you can even download software such as Photo Rescue that will recover the pictures for you. So have more than one memory card, even though you can shoot thousands of pictures on one of them. Now there are a wide variety of different memory cards. One four gigabyte card may cost you a few dollars and another four gigabyte card may cost four times as much. What's the difference? Well, the difference between memory cards of the same size is usually the speed of the card. The speed of the memory card is important if you're going to be doing video or taking a burst of pictures. So have a look at that when you buy a memory card. The other area where the speed of the memory card comes in is when you download your photographs. If you have a fast card and a fast card reader, then you'll be able to read your photographs significantly faster than you would do with a slower card. So if it takes you quite a while to download your pictures, then maybe you should consider buying a faster card reader and a faster memory card. One of my favorite card readers at the moment is this one. This is a Lexar card reader. It's very high speed and it takes both a compact flash memory card and an SD memory card. The advantage of using a card reader is that we're not dependent upon the camera to be used as a card reader. When we download photographs directly from the camera, then the camera has to be switched on. I'm using a lot of battery power. This can be an issue if you're traveling and you don't have access to power. So personally, I, I use a card reader. It's faster and it doesn't use any of my battery power up. That brings me to spare batteries. When you buy a new camera, it's important to get at least one spare battery. There's nothing worse than being caught out when at a family event or etc and suddenly your battery runs out. So make sure you always have a spare battery and that it's fully charged. The next thing we'll look at is a UV filter. A UV filter goes on the front of the lens. Now these filters don't usually fit on most compact cameras. So if you've got a compact camera don't worry about a UV filter because your lens is going to be protected when you switch the camera off as most lenses will fold behind a protective cover. However, if you've got an expensive lens for your digital SLR, then I will strongly recommend putting a UV filter on the front of it. Not only will the UV filter control the amount of haze in the picture, but it will also protect the lens. If you knock the camera off a rock or if the tripod falls over or you just drop the camera, then the UV filter is going to take the brunt of the damage and not the lens. And I've had a couple of occasions personally when that's happened to me and I've been able to throw away a $40 UV filter instead of having to write off an expensive lens. So UV filters are very important to protect your lens. Another useful filter is the polarizing filter. The polarizing filter will be demonstrated in the field with Celine and Leanne. The polarizing filter can be this type, which is circular and screws onto the lens like the UV filter. Or you could put a polarizing filter 
into a filter holder such as this coking filter holder. Another useful filter, especially for landscape photographers, is called a graduated or split neutral density filter, which is this one. This, as you can see, is dark at the top and transparent at the bottom. This allows us to balance our scene when we have very high contrast, particularly in the morning or in the evening when mountains may be lit by the sun, but the valleys below are dark and in the shade. We'll be looking at this in the field as to how this works. If you're going to do a slow shutter speed, maybe to photograph moving water, then you'll need to keep your camera still. An easy and inexpensive way of doing that is to use a device such as this GorillaPod. GorillaPods are very lightweight and very flexible. You can put your compact camera or even a bigger SLR on the appropriate sized GorillaPod and then either stand the GorillaPod up on the ground or even wrap the legs around a post or fence. If you want something freestanding, then you will need a tripod. Tripods come in all sizes and materials. This one is a carbon fiber tripod. Carbon fiber tripods are lightweight, but expensive. I like to use Faisal tripods because they're very well made and incredibly strong. Also, one nice thing they have is these rapid release legs. With one twist, you can undo all three leg sections like this. So we'll look at tripods again in the field. Another useful accessory when we talk about flash is to use an external flash. The big advantage of an external flash over a built-in flash is that you can bounce the head or the light off a ceiling or a wall. This can give you a much more natural look and is a lot more flattering than directly facing the flash at the person.